Um, but going through this, I created a couple of layers and a couple of classes. I called it uh, tracing layer in this case. And um, then I called the class, I think, tracing class or something of that sort. Or tracing for demo without any kind of attributes on it because I'm just doing the demo of it. And I make sure that I'm in both classes. And then we get down to the nitty gritty of actually tracing this thing. I've already sized these. I've scaled them all. And I'm using this polyline tool. And I'm following the tool itself. Hopefully this thing go out of the way. And zooming in on these rough edges, I just zoomed in very close and did very rough shape matching. It's, you can see it's pretty close. And I'm moving pretty quickly here because I sped up the video. Okay. The entire time, this video is about 14 minutes long. Um, sped up and I'll skip through some of it because there's some stuff close to the end. This is just sort of, this is all the same. It's just all basically the same. Is matching the, the locations, um, doing straight lines where I can. It's almost entirely straight lines except when there was the curves on top of the windows which come up a little bit later. And in some cases I had to back up. And you can back up if you're doing multiple lines that are connected to each other and you mess up, hit backspace. And you can go back to the previous point. Okay. Yeah. You don't. What What happened with me, and and I cut one of them out of this because it took me a while to figure out where I was having the trouble, was that if you accidentally close a polygon by accident, you have to. It's easiest to redo it. But if you just snapped at the wrong place, you can do backspace and go back to your previous point and then continue again. And you can backspace through dozens of points. If you're doing something complicated like this and you messed up, you can back up a couple of times. And this video will show that I've uh, that I press back up and such. And the straight line, remember to horizontal and vertical snap, you can press shift and then you can continue on a straight line as you want. The other thing that we can do is on an occasion, um, you've got your snaps turned on and you can't quite get the mark that you want. If you want to turn off the snaps for a moment and not have to turn off the actual snaps using the snap bar down in the corner, you press the tilde button. And that's the button to the left of the number one uh, key on the top of your keyboard. Okay, it's, it's the accent. Um, the accent. Okay, not tilde because it would be capital, but it's a little accent on the left. And so sometimes you'll see on this uh, video that the bar, the, the, I'm pressing tilde down on the uh, keyboard indicator. I'm holding it down. This gray bar right here means I'm holding down a key the entire time. So I'm holding down the tilde to get across the curved line. Now I'm inserting a, I've done the outline of this window unit. Now I'm doing a straight rectangle and I extrude it to the same as the uh, flat, which is two and three quarters. I'm changing to uh, the arc to do the arc of this sunburst window on the top. And I had to try a couple of different attempts at it, but here I'm doing a straight across arc with a, with a center point chosen. Okay, and it's tending to snap and give me a little trouble, but I fixed it. Okay, so here I'm hitting the top mark from center line. And I'm playing with the snaps because I was having a little trouble getting it to actually line up. There we go. I got it that time. Now I'm going to extrude this to the same. And now I'm going to choose all three items, the rectangle for the middle window, the sunburst one, and the frame itself. And I'm going to subtract the solid so I put a hole in the flat for the rectangle and the sunburst and you'll see I'm going to view it from the side and here comes this object from isometric view and there it is on the floor with the holes in it. 
Okay, so it's a basic 3D shot of the wall with the window holes in it, as opposed to using the wall tool and then trying to make the top of the wall look jagged. Um, so that, that's how that works. This was a quick shortcut. I wanted to have yep. the same shape of the window, including the arch window on the top, to n use for the next mm -hmm. flat. So I opened up the extruded item, I grabbed those two items and copied them, and then pasted them for yeah. later use. Um, I can show you that, and I have trouble with that too. What, what happens is that when you're, uh, I can give you a demo of that if you remind me. Um, what happens is as you're drawing a, a specially complicated shape, and you're going click, 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 if you accidentally go over one of your previous lines, and you do like a little crisscross, you can't extrude the crisscross. It has to be an actual shape that there's nothing um, crossing the boundary twice. You can't figure out how to do that. So it means that when you've gotten into your really small details and you've sort of created a, a, a sort of a figure eight shape anywhere in your lines, um, that's what you've done. Is, and it's saying, I can't figure that out because you've got a, something going across a line. Um, so you can actually reshape the, the polygon. Uh, with a reshape tool, and you have you, the challenge is finding it, especially w against the PDF because the black lines. So if you turn off the PDF layer, then you can find it, and you can edit it to fix it, or you end up having to redo it. You probably redid it, right? Yeah, that's what it is, and I can show it to you. It's a good thing to learn because it happens to me all the time, especially with these complicated set designs somebody gives me, and I'm trying to. Uh, trace these. You'll see I've really uh, zoomed in far to trace this line. So there's this door, and now I'm drawing a straight wind, uh, rectangle to cut out the door itself. And we'll insert a door when we're going to build the flat. Um, so I did this with the door flats. I just drew the flat itself and then, it, then um, subtracted the, a rectangle in the shape of the door. Okay, and this goes on and on, and then I did the other two windows, so I'm going to skip ahead a little bit, hopefully. That's where I end up. This was the detail of the brick wall, the cutaway brick wall. That took a lot of work. Okay. Um, it was, it was yes, there is a curve function of the polyline tool. You can do the polyline in uh, straight lines, in, in Bezier <laughs> curves, in uh, regular arcs, you can, and you just add them all together. They stay, it stays one complete drawing. Now here I've got a, um, a view of all the doors. I did those in uh, flat view, and now I have to stand them up. So I stood them up, I looked at them from the side, and now I'm grabbing them and lining up to the ground plan themselves and then doing rotates. So there's the, the wall near the stairs. Now I'm going to go up, and I found that it was a pain to keep zooming in and out to grab everything. So in this case, I'm going to grab everything and move them closer to the ground plan. I grab them all, I move them closer so they're in one window, and now I'm moving these items and just lining them up and using the rotate tool to rotate them in, sp in place. Okay. Now I'm going to grab this uh, front door, well, that side door, I guess, rotate it around, move it in place, grab the, that front door of the apartment, again, um, I, here I'm changing the workspace because my rotate was an R, and on yours it's um, Alt equals, which is the standard one, and I wanted to make sure that I was doing it the same way you would have to do it. I, I've customi customi customated, customized my workspace so that R is for rotate instead of Alt equals. So I'm just moving these in place, plopping them down, rotating them to reflect the direction that's on the ground plan. And uh, this just zips along. Let's see if I can forward this a little bit. So here's the ground plan. It's set up. Now I've got a couple more to bring in.
And now this one gets rotated for that window over there. It does not have yet the actual windows that swing open and close. I didn't do those. Um, I also didn't do much for Eunice's apartment except I did put the platform there. I extruded it to six inches. I placed it in place and then up, on, up here um, I probably raised it up to the appropriate height in the bottom Z. I put it at plus uh, 102 inches because a six foot platform if the ground plan says 108 and there's a six foot platform it has to be to the bottom of the platform. Now here's a front view of everything and you can see the seats are in the way. I think I ended up turning off the seating layer which should show in just a moment. And there they go. I just got rid of the architecture. So I just had to end up with just the stage. All I really want to have is the stage. So I turned one of the architectures back on. I grabbed the entire set and it has ended up below the set level, so I just had to raise it up so it's sitting on the stage. So there's the set sitting in place. And now I'm giving the uh, set pieces some uh, surface treatment so that we can see it. And there it is sitting in place. Okay. Play with some shading, play with some um, uh, shaded polygons and viewing it from different angles. Now something else that's about to come in, oh this is me cutting a door in one of the walls that wasn't cut. So here we're going to come up to, I've turned on the visualization palette, which is new, and I'm going to use the camera tool. So now we're taking a look at the camera view, and I have to draw a line in order to tell the program where I want to be sitting and in what direction I want to look at. We're going to set this to perspective, and we're looking at some of the settings in this window, and that's the camera. We're going to look straight ahead, and now we have our window that we see our scene in perspective. These are great to hand out to uh, your assistants or to yourselves, to your students to do shading. Now we're adding some, uh, doing some, the OpenGL so that we can see shading. And that's how we can get a great perspective view from the front of our scenery. Thanks for watching.